Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I've got a micro ATX build for you and we're going to be building a PC in the Deepcool CH370. Now this case is available today on Amazon for less than $60 which does seem too good to be true for a case that looks this good so we're going to be taking a really detailed look at the case. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the ASRock B760M Phantom Gaming Sonic Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 13th Gen i7, the 13700K. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm AIO from Deepcool. It's the LT720 White. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 at 5600MB transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with two Gen 4 NVMe drives for this build. The first is from Kingston and it's their Fury Renegade in 500GB capacity. And the second drive is from Team Group and it's their T-Force Cardia A440 Pro in 1TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a fully modular 80 plus gold power supply from Deepcool. It's the PQ1000M. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti. For case fans, I'm going to be using Leon Lee's SL Infinity 120 Uni fans in white. And the final part for today's build is some white cable extensions from Cable Mod. Okay, time to build. So as usual, I'm going to make a start by preparing the case, and as we go, I'll point out all the case's main features. So our temper glass side panel is magnetically attached at the top. There's a lever here we just need to pull to free it up, and then we can simply lift the temper glass panel up and away. Up at the front we've actually got a headset holder so we can push the button in here, it's going to pop out and then we can set our headphones into place. To remove our other side panel we've got two captive thumb screws at the back which we need to loosen and then we can pull the panel backwards and lift away. Taking a look at our case's front I.O. we've got a power and reset button, we've got two USB Type-A ports and a combined headphone and microphone jack. On the top of the case we've got a magnetically attached dust filter which can simply be pulled away. So just before we remove our front panel, I want to show you a really cool feature it has. If you look at the pattern in the holes at the front of the case, there's a little button on the bottom of the case that I can pull forward. And you'll notice that changes the appearance of the front panel. So the cross pattern has now disappeared. And if I push the little button up again, the cross pattern reappears. To remove our front panel, we just need to pull it out from the front. If we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there is a dust filter built into the back of the panel. It doesn't look like it's easily removable. There is some screws that you could probably remove to get it out if you wanted to. But I think the reason it's built this way is because this mechanism that we've got here for changing the appearance of the front of the case it needs it to be built in. So at the front of the case you're going to be able to fit up to three 120 or 240mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. At the top of the case it's up to two 120 or 240mm fans or up to a 280mm radiator. While at the back of the case it's up to 120mm fan or radiator and this is where you get the case's one and only included case fan. It's a plain black fan without any RGB on it and it's got a three pin fan connector so you're going to have to run it in DC mode rather than PWM mode. Now I am planning on using Leanne Lee's Uni fans in this build so I'm going to go ahead and remove this fan. You can also mount 220mm fans on the power supply stride and you can see we've got holes here for mounting the fans. So all you would do is line your fans up with the holes and then you get long radiator screws in the case accessory box which you're going to screw down through the fan into the bottom of the case. So while it's nice to have some fan mounting locations at the bottom, as this is a micro ATX rather than a full sized ATX case, when we set our graphics card into place, line it up with the very top slot, you'll notice that basically there's a very little gap between the graphics card and the fans. And in testing in previous cases when it has actually been this close, and in fact the power supply is going to be blocking the intake from one of the fans, I've generally found they don't make any difference to the temperatures. And in some cases actually having it this close can actually hurt the GPU temperatures. So I don't think fans at the bottom of the case, particularly with this larger graphics card, is going to help. So as I mentioned, this is a micro ATX case and you're going to be able to install either a micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard. If you want to go with a CPU air cooler, you'll be pleased to hear you can install pretty large air coolers up to a maximum height of 165mm. At the back of the case we've got four horizontal PCI expansion slots and you're going to be able to fit pretty large graphics cards up to a maximum length of 320mm. Another really nice feature the case has, it comes with a built-in GPU support bracket. 
So to adjust it, there's two screws at the back which we need to loosen. And then we're going to be able to slide the GPU support bracket up to a point where it supports our graphics card. And there is some padding on it here. And then we can just simply tighten the thumb screws at the back to hold it in place. So moving into our rear compartment, we've got cutouts in sensible places going through to the main body of the case. But as you'd expect, in the case of this price point, we don't have any rubber grommets on them. We've also got plenty of cable tie down points as well. And in our case accessory bag, we've got some cable ties. So we'll go ahead and remove the case accessory bag. So in terms of drive mounting locations, we've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting locations. And these are my favorite way to mount drives. We've got these little rubber pads, and then you get these little pegs in the case accessory box, which we can screw in to the back of our SSD. And then all we need to do is line our SSD up and push it into place. And it really is that simple. So down at the bottom of the case, we've got a hard drive cage and it is movable and removable. You can see it's fixed into this hole, but there's also another set of holes slightly further forward. So you are going to be able to move the hard drive further forward and make more space for your power supply. So to move or remove the hard drive cage, there's two screws that we need to remove. And just while we're here, I just want to point out the dust filter at the bottom of the case over our power supply's intake. And it's just a simple sheet of mesh. So with the screws removed, it's just a simple matter of pulling the hard drive cage towards us and it can be lifted out. And obviously if you wanted to move it along, you could just slide it to the front position and push it into place and replace the screws. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I'm not planning on installing any hard drives in this build. So in our drive cage, we're actually going to be able to accommodate up to two three and a half inch drives. So one on the drive tray itself and then one mounted on top. But if you prefer, you've also got mounting holes for a two and a half inch drive. So you can have one two and a half inch drive on top and then two installed in the dedicated brackets on the case. So our power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized HX power supplies up to a maximum length of 160 millimeters. Although if you remove the hard drive cage like we have done, you've got absolutely loads of space for your power supply and associated cables. And if we take a look at the back of the case, as you'd expect in a case in this price point, there's no removable power supply bracket. So we're going to have to install our power supply in from the side before screwing it in from the back. We're now ready to start working on the motherboard and we're going to be installing the CPU, the bracket for our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSDs and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open the CPU socket cover, we need to push the lever down and out and all the way to the top of the motherboard and then we can open up the socket cover. We can then set our CPU into the socket, line that up with the notches at the top and at the bottom. And once we've got it into the socket, it's just a little wiggle from side to side to check it's in the right way round. And importantly, making sure we've got the text in the correct way up. Then all we're going to want to do is close the cover down. I find with the Intel boards, I prefer putting a little bit of pressure here to get the black bit of plastic to pop off. And then we'll set that in our motherboard box to keep it safe. And then we can close the socket cover down to secure our CPU. This motherboard has three M.2 SSD sockets, one behind the top heatsink and two behind this heatsink. So we'll go ahead and get the heatsinks removed. Okay, so we can line our M.2 SSD up with a slot and slide it into place. And you'll notice that whenever we re-secure the heatsink, the same screw that holds the heatsink in place is also going to secure the drive. Before we return the heatsink, we've just got some plastic protection to remove. And then we can insert our bottom M.2 SSD. And this time you'll notice that we're actually going to have to secure it with a screw. So there's a screw in the motherboard box we can use. Again, we just need to remove the plastic protection from the heatsink. I'm just going to remove it from both sides. Next, we need to install our RAM. We've only got two sticks. We're going to want to install it in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. So we'll go ahead and open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with the slots. Once we're happy, we've got everything lined up. It's just some firm pressure to the RAM and it's going to clip into place. Same thing with our second stick. Line it up with the slots and some firm pressure to secure it. Next, we're ready to install the backplate for our CPU cooler. Because we've got an LGA 700 socket, we need to have these pins on the backplate pulled all the way to the outside. And then it should just be a simple matter of lining it up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. And then we've got one of these spacers to go into each corner. It is important to use the ones labeled 1700. 
Next we can set the motherboard into the case lining it up with the standoffs at the back. And you'll notice that once we get the middle standoff into the motherboard, it's going to hold the motherboard in place. And then we can use the screws with a little lip around the outside to secure the motherboard to the case. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in and our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout, get it lined up with the header and push into place and then pull the access cable through to the back. So then we've got our front panel connectors and they're going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring the cables through the cutout and you'll notice we've got three individual cables to plug into specific pins on the header. So it's important you refer to the diagram in the motherboard manual. So starting off with the bottom row, working from left to right, pins one and two are for hard drive LED positive and hard drive LED negative. So we're going to need to plug the cable in with the text facing down the way. Next to that, into pins three and four from the left hand side in the bottom row, we've got our reset switch. It doesn't matter which way it goes in, I'm just going to plug it in with the text facing down the way. And then moving up to the top row, pins three and four from the left hand side are for our power switch. It doesn't matter which way it goes in, I'm just going to plug it in with the text facing down the way. And then we can go ahead and pull the access cable through to the back. Then we've got our USB 3.0 cable that's going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, push into place, and then we'll pull the access cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our power supply, and although it is fully modular, it comes without any cables plugged in, I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 24-pin cable, two 8-pin EPS cables, and three PCIe cables. You'll also notice I've plugged in our white cable extensions to the end of the power supply cables. These are completely optional. They will improve the look of the build, but they won't add any functionality to it. And they are gonna make cable management at the back a little bit more difficult. Just before we put the power supply into the case, it is important to point out this is the power supply's intake fan. So we're gonna to want to install it facing down the way. So we can slide our power supply in at the bottom of the case and bring it all the way to the back. And then we can secure the power supply into place with four of the larger screws from the case accessory bag. The two 8-pin EPS cables provide additional power to our CPU are going to go into these two headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we can go ahead and bring them through the cutout, line them up with the headers, and push into place. And then you'll notice we've got some cable combs on the cables to help organize them. And then we can pull the access cable through to the back. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here so we can bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then again you'll notice we've got some cable combs on the cable to help organize it. Next we can set our I.O. into the case and then I'm going to set our fans into place in front of the radiator. What we're going to do now is use the long radiator screws, pass them through the case, through the fans and into the radiator. And this can be a little bit tricky because the screws are literally just long enough to reach the radiator and no more. And it is quite tricky to get everything lined up but importantly once we get the bottom fan on the rest should be a little bit easier. We've got a cutout at the top of the case, so I'm just going to bring all the fan cables up and pass them through to the back. The AIO comes with this triple fan splitter cable, so all I'm going to do is plug each of the fan cables into the splitter cable. So there's one, take our second one and plug it into here. And then our third one into here. I'm then going to pass the other end of the cable through to the front of the case. And you'll notice at the top of the motherboard we've got two fan headers. The one over to the left is our CPU fan header and the one over to the right is our CPU pump header. So we're going to want to plug into the one on the left, the CPU fan header. So we'll line the cable up with the header, push into place and then pull the access cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our pump. So the first thing to point out is we're going to have to install it with the tubes at the bottom to have the logo up the correct way round. Now this bit that has the RGB on it is removable from the pump itself. We just need to pull it off, it's magnetically attached, and then it's going to be much easier to install the pump without the cover on it. 
So we're now ready to install the bracket that's going to secure the pump to the motherboard. You'll notice we've got thermal paste pre-applied to the cold plate and we've got this bit of plastic protection on. I've left the plastic protection on as long as possible so we don't damage the thermal paste on the cold plate. But to install the bracket we are going to have to remove it. So it's just a matter of pulling the plastic off. And then once it's off I'm going to take real care not to touch the thermal paste. So what we're going to do now is set our Intel bracket into place at the top of the cold plate. Um, one of the really cool things Deepcool have done with this cooler is they have made the screws magnetically attached. So all we need to do is set the screw into place and it's going to hold there and then we can screw it into place with the screwdriver. The same thing at the other side. Same thing at the bottom, we'll set the bracket into place. Set the screw into place. Okay, so just before we install this in the case, I want to show you what I like to do with the cables. So in general, I like to wrap the cable around the bracket, so it helps organize the cable up towards the top of the motherboard. It is important that you make sure the cable doesn't go anywhere near the cold plate, but it just means the cables are going to look that wee bit tidier. The other thing that I'm going to do as well is this pump cable. We've also got our ARGB cable that comes from this removable bracket. So I'm just going to set the cable up here before I install it as well. Okay, so that's our two cables wrapped around the bracket. And I'm then just going to set them into place. And then we're just going to need to secure the bracket to the case with a thumb screw on each corner. So I'm also just making sure that both our cables are nice and free and well away from the cold plate. And then we can tighten up each corner in turn. At this stage we can then return the cover to the pump. So we've now got our two cables to plug in. Our pump header is this one at the top right hand side of the motherboard. So we can line the cable up and push into place. And then I'm just going to route the cable up and through to the back of the motherboard. The RGB cable again I'm just going to route up and bring it through to the back of our motherboard. And we've got two ARGB headers at the top of the motherboard. So I'm just going to bring the cable back in from the side and get it plugged into this header at the top. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. We've then got some plastic protection here that we need to remove. And then we need to choose which way we're going to have the tubes. So we can have them over towards the right hand side but that actually has the tubes running very straight and quite a tight bend. What I think I'm going to try is having the tubes pass down through the 24 pin cable and coming down to the bottom on this side. Okay, next thing to do is get our case fans installed and we can join our Leon Lee Uni fans together by lining up the connectors and then pushing them down into place. We've now got these additional connectors on the end that we can remove just by twisting them and pulling them out. And then I'm just going to connect them up using the cable that comes with a single pack of fans. If you get a triple pack they come with a hub which you can connect up with a USB cable to your motherboard and I have done an installation guide for this. What I'm going to do is just show you connecting them directly to the motherboard and using the motherboard's ARGB to light the fans. The reason I'm doing this is I want the simple white on the fans. If you want more fancy effects, Leon Lee's L Connect will give you that, but you do have to use a hub. So coming from this cable, we've got a four pin PWM connector. We need to plug into a system fan header on our motherboard and a three pin five volt ARGB connector, which just needs to go into an ARGB header on our motherboard. So all we need to do is set our fan connector onto the end of the Leon Lee Uni fans and then push down on it to lock it into place. And we can then set our fans into place at the top of the case. Okay, so setting the fans in at the top, I'm noting a problem when it comes to screwing them in. Because we've got a radiator and tubes running down from the radiator at the front, this is as far forward as I can actually get the fans. The hole is here, but it actually needs to get down as far as here to allow me to screw it in. So what I think I'm actually going to do is actually screw in through the little holes that we have here in the square, rather than actually the official slots that we have to hold it into place. The holes of the fans seem to line up quite nicely here, so it should do a good job of holding the fans in place. And then we can replace the dust filter at the top. And the bit you're probably interested in is, does the dust filter actually sit down flat? 
and it does because the screws are completely recessed into the squares. There's no actual bumps that I can feel here in the dust filter sitting lovely and flat at the top. I'm then going to pass the fan cables through to the back of the case. We can then set another Liani Uni fan into place at the back and then we'll get things screwed into place. And then I'm just going to pass the cables coming from the fans through to the back. We've got an ARGB header down the bottom left of the motherboard, so we'll bring the cable coming from our back fan through, line it up with the header and push into place. And two headers along, we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the cable from our rear fan through, line it up, push into place, and then we can pull the excess cable through to the back. And for our top fan, we've got another ARGB header here at the top right of the motherboard, so we can bring the cable through, line it up and push into place. And then halfway down the right hand side of the motherboard we've got another system fan header and then pull the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our graphics card and we're going to need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. To get access to them we're going to have to loosen the thumb screw here and slide this bracket forward. And we can then remove the screws holding the slot covers in place. We can then open the clip on the PCIe slot. We can then slide our graphics card into the case, line it up with the slot, and then once we're happy everything's lined up with the slot, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card, and it's going to clip into place. We can then secure the graphics card into place with the two screws we removed earlier on, and then we can slide the bracket back into place and tighten up the thumb screw. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout in the bottom of the case, line it up with the graphics card, and push into place, making sure we get a nice click holding it in place. And then again, we've got some cable combs on the cable to help organize it. So then we can slide the GPU support bracket up to where it's supporting the graphics card, taking care that it's not getting in the way of the fans. And then we'll just tighten the thumb screws up at the back to hold it in place. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management so we can get the sign panel back on again. So that's the build complete and I'm absolutely delighted with how it turned out. I've gone with my favourite black and white themed build and in a case that's black and white it looks so good. And again the Sonic motherboard from Azrock I think looks so good um, and works really well in this particular case. So you can see I've gone ahead and set things up. The reason I've done that is I've made lots of full step-by-step -step build guides and covering Windows installation, getting all the drivers installed, the RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating the BIOS and adjusting all the BIOS settings. So if you don't know how to do any of those, I'll leave a link to another video in the description that you should be able to follow after following the build guide up to this stage and get the PC up and running and looking just as good as this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and do some thermal testing. And I actually really like this case, so I'm going to go ahead and do a full case review. In that review, I'm going to cover any issues I had during the build, any tips and tricks that I think you should be doing. And I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on this case. So if you are thinking of doing a build in this case, you're probably going to want to check that review out. And again, I'll put a link to it in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.